This CAMP Photoshop tutorial is demonstrated in Adobe Photoshop CS3. Most or all of the techniques can be accomplished in previous versions of Photoshop. Welcome to CAMP Photoshop, the destination for new adventures and creativity. Learn more at CampPhotoshop.com. Now, Adobe Certified Expert and Head CAMP Counselor, Roger Ridpath. And this is tutorial 006 which is a continuation of tutorial 005. I'm going to jump right in where we left off on tutorial 005. If you want to go to your layers style and pick bevel and emboss, I've already pre-figured this out. You want to pick an outer bevel. You want to pick chisel hard and we'll set the size to zero and the gloss contour to half curve and we want to set our highlight mode to hard light and we want to set the opacity to 100 percent and we'll say OK that gives us a little bevel and we want to duplicate that for our second piece of tape there's a great quick way you can do that holding down your option or alt key and clicking on the effect itself you can drag it down to the other tape layer now we have the same effect on both layers you can't quite see that yet but we'll save that for the reveal at the very end now the next thing we want to do to our dymo tape effect is we want to add that bent edge effect and I'm going to jump back to our example just momentarily and what I'm talking about is this little white highlight here which gives the effect that this edge has been bent a little bit. Well, I've come up with a pretty quick and simple way to accomplish that. We want to go to our brush tool and we want to select a soft edged brush uh, approximately 5 to 10 pixels. I'm going to pick a soft round 5 pixel brush for this demonstration. And I'm going to be working on my new layer that I've created and I'm going to go to the area where I want to create the bend which is going to be in this area here of my tape. Now I'm going to hold the shift key down and start at the top edge of the tape. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to paint downward in a straight line. Now that's not quite what we want to do, but that gets us started. What we want to do next is use the Transform tool, which is Command or Control T. And now we have some options here to work with this shape that we've just made. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually rotate this shape so that I can create the bend area that I want. By holding down on the command or control key while I'm in the transform mode, I can move individual points of this shape. So I'm going to I'm going to pull this out and widen it, and I want it to go past the edges. So I'm going to stretch it out up here. I'm just grabbing these individual points, doing some stretching and some moving. I'm going to move down just a little bit to see what I've got going at the bottom. Again, I want this to go past the edge here. Let's get the whole thing on the screen here. I want both ends to go past the edges. And I, I'm, I've stretched out the top area so that it's wider than the bottom so that I can kind of pull off that effect that I like. And I'm going to move these shapes around just a little bit kind of get that effect and I'm going to hit the enter key and now I've got a nice bend there now I you can see that I have this set below the type layer and I'm getting a little bit of of a cutoff here so I want to move this above our two type layers that eliminated that problem and I'm going to want to put a mask on this new layer that I've made so that we don't have any of the white area that we've made for this bend hanging out past the edge. And the fastest way to do that is go to the layer 
that represents this particular advantage area and that happens to be this layer here. I'm going to go to the layer mask, the vector layer mask. I'm going to hold down the command or control key and click on the mask area and it's going to create a selection that is based on that shape layer. Then I'm going to go back up to my bend that I've created up here and I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to go to the add layer mask option and click that and now I have a layer mask on my bend so that it will not show up in the background. I want to show you how to take advantage of Photoshop's smart objects to finish out this project so I'm going to zoom in on the layers palette just to show you a important detail that you'll want to be aware of and it's this little chain that is linking our layers with their masks and you can see that on each layer that I have there is a chain there this chain or connection can be removed by actually clicking on the chain itself and that disconnects the layer from its mask make sure that this chain is present for all of your objects in this tutorial. We do not have a background present in our Photoshop file, so I want to select the Move tool, and I'm going to just drag across this top group of objects, and Photoshop has automatically selected all the layers that we've dragged across. Now I'm just going to go to the Layer menu Flyout, and I'm going to say Convert to Smart Object. And Photoshop has taken all of those objects and made them into one single smart object. So now this Dymo tape that we've created is one smart object. We want to go ahead and drag across the bottom group of objects that make up our Dymo tape and we want to again go to the flyout menu and convert to smart object. Now our entire file has been reduced to two smart objects, our two pieces of Dymo tape. This makes working with this design from this point super easy. What we want to do now to match the design that we were talking about or to do something similar, you can see they're turned at an angle and they're kind of overlapping, so we can do this very easily now. We just need to select each of our smart objects. I'm going to select the Photoshop one first, and I'm going to utilize the Transform tool. The shortcut for that is Command or Control T, and I'm going to rotate this just slightly, and I'm going to hit the Return Enter key, and then I'm going to select the other group, the other smart object group, and use the Command Control T key again, and I'm going to rotate this into a position that I like. I think I might do it like this. And I'm thinking I don't know if I like what I've done overall there. So I'm going to actually select both smart objects. Now I've got them both. And again, I'll Command T. I'm going to rotate the whole group just a little bit. And um, you can see how easy it is to work with these smart objects even though there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle we're just down to two smart objects now just as a final final touch I want to throw a little background behind here I'm gonna open up an image that I've pulled from iStock I've opened up that image and I'm gonna to go to the layer palette just drop that into my image I want to make sure it's on the bottom and now I've got my two pieces of Dymo tape on an interesting background and if you want to get a little bit fancy, something interesting that you can do with a smart object is you can actually apply another layer style to it. So I can go in and add a drop shadow to my layer style. And there we've got a little bit of, uh, of a drop shadow and I can option click on that effect and add it to another layer object. So, great looking effect with our Dymo tape. Raj, that looks great. You've reached the end of this camping trip. Hike over to CampPhotoshop.com, where visitors can sign up for freebies and more video tutorials by Adobe Certified Expert and Camp Counselor, Roger Redpath.